Welcome back. Today I am in the basement brewery and we are going to do the Sip and Fall Pale Ale. This is going to be a predominantly dry malt extract beer, but I'm going to be steeping some specialty grains uh, into this beer. And more importantly, I'm going to be using my AeroPress to make some Sippy Falls Ugandan coffee uh, that I'm also going to add to this pale ale. So it's going to be a, a fairly light pale ale uh, with galaxy hops in the last few minutes of the boil. Uh, it's going to be kvaik fermented, um, but I'm heating up the water. I've got to get some grain ground uh, because I can't do that down here with all the power stuff. We're going to do that. And when I get back, we'll start talking about the beer. Max is wearing the microphone now. Now, what we've already done is we've already went and ground our grain. Now, I used an electric coffee grinder to do this uh, for steeping purposes. Be very careful. This is borderline ready for the drip coffee maker. Ground that. Now, we got the hops weighed out uh, just to get that done early. Now, can you tell me, what, do you, what did you think of the smell? Oh, strong. It's strong. Can you, here's an idea. Does it smell like anything else? Do you smell fruit or do you smell, I smell flowers? Fruit. Do you smell, what do you smell? What kind of fruit do you think that might be? Oh. Tropical fruit? Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of got a, like, passion fruity almost. Yeah. This is galaxy hops that we're using. Now these are hops that uh, Luke got for me uh, from the Durham Home Brewers. Durham, hey, cheers folks. We're going to use um, an immersion basket for this green because it's so fine uh, and I don't have any socks around right now. I don't need to sanitize it, we're pre-boiled, so that's all right, not a problem. And we're doing a four and a half liter batch here, so that's, we're all good. So Max is gonna help me put the grain into this basket because we're almost up to temperature, we're at 136 now. So let's gently fill that up. Oh, look at the dust sneaking through. So there will definitely be a little bit more trub in this bur in this in this um, beer than I expected. You can see the circle, can't you? Um, there'll be a little more trub in this than I wanted from the powder, but it will settle out during fermentation, and that won't be a problem. So when we get to t well, that's just for cleaning stuff up. Uh, so that's taken care of for the moment. I've pulled 200 ml of water out of the hot water for this is about 60 degrees right now. I'm going to make a cool brew of coffee of, of our Sippy Falls coffee for this sip. What are you doing? And let's lower that into the, let's lower that in. Now for the record, my kids don't drink beer. That's, they, they don't drink beer. They don't even like beer, but Doing things with your kids is awesome, and doing things with my kids is something I really enjoy doing. So, if I can have my kid help me make some beer, I think that's absolutely... Hey, buddy! I'm recording underneath you! Stop it! <laughs> Stop it! All right, we've suspended our grain Nightmares are going on in the kitchen. Remember that thing I said about liking to do things with my kids? I might be lying, I'm not sure. Now, I've also weighed out 450 grams of dry malt extract. All right, we've got our grain steeping at 147 for 15 minutes. Alexa, set a timer for 15 minutes. Thank you. You're awesome. Um, okay, so the water is at 147, 148 degrees. We're gonna just let that grain steep. I'm using uh, Sippy Falls coffee from Uganda. Um, as always, whenever I can, I like to get my grain locally. So uh, as much of the grain as I I'm using came locally. Red Shed um, is a crystal uh, substitute. And I'm also using uh, Rogue Wave coffee from here in Edmonton. Great little local roaster. Hey bud. Are you back to help make the coffee? Yes. All right. Why don't you come over here? Come over here. No, over here. Okay. Stand beside me. Now we're going to take that same vessel that we got our water from. This one? Uh, yeah. Okay. Now, gently and in one move, I want you to turn this 
upside down and put it down on there or put that on top and then flip them both over. Perfect. Now put your hand on top and gently, I will push you so you know how hard we're pushing. Mm -hmm. That's it. You feel that? Now, do you see the coffee starting to come out the bottom? Yeah. Okay, now AeroPress is a, my favorite thing. Um, I love my coffee, but I'll tell you what, I sure love my AeroPress coffee even more. Slow and easy wins the race, right? Isn't that what we learned from Paw Patrol? Yes. Yeah. So we're going to make this coffee. So this is going to be, a, it's, a, it's a cold, basically a cold brew. So it's not going to have any bitterness to add to the beer, but it's going to have lots of that rich coffee flavor. There we go. And now we hear the air. So we're through the coffee now. And we've just pressed the rest of the coffee out. That's it. Perfect. Now. Yeah, it is. Now, what's wonderful about an AeroPress is once you've gotten to this point, we'll let it drip for a minute and keep it warm, but this will come out as a plug and we don't have to worry about coffee grounds. We'll just literally push the plunger and it'll drop into the garbage like a little puck of completely ground coffee. Now, tell me if you smell any fruit in this coffee. Yes, it'll be strong coffee, but tell me if you smell any fruit. No? no? What if I said berry? Can you smell any yeah. berry? Yeah. What kind of berry, maybe? Maybe blueberries or raspberries. Blueberries and raspberries. Blueberry and raspberry How are two of I the flavors. Exactly. Two of the flavors. Hey, bud, look. Yeah, that's right. Blueberries, raspberry, a little yogurt. That's what comes out of the, the sippy falls, which is really, really lovely. And I think using a kvike yeast to do this will yield some interesting results because Kvike has so many flavors of its own uh, to bring to the party. So I'm thinking this could be a complete Frankenstein of a beer, even though it's a simple dry malt extract beer. All right, come on. Now, Max is gonna help me. He, we're gonna drain this grain. So we're gonna just carefully lift it up. Let it sit for a sec. See how it's dripping? Like crazy. Okay, now we're gonna pull it up and we're gonna set it into this container. Perfect, and we're just gonna let it sit. Whatever liquid is in there will drain out. We'll add that back to the batch. Now, I don't really need a thermometer anymore. I'm going to keep this one just to keep an eye on things, but I can definitely undo the, the ink bird. It actually crept up all the way to 152. Um, that's not terrible. When you're doing a kitchen batch, your mash time and temps are going to be a little all over the place. Um, being able to get it within even three or four degrees oh consistently God. is super valuable. So. Well, yeah, the probe's out of the water now, right? So now we're gonna mix in our DME. Now DME will mix in much better in warm, uh, warm water than cold, obviously. So we're gonna do that first before we start heating it up. If we start heating it too soon, what will happen is that sugar will burn on the bottom of the pot. And that is something we don't want. Um, burnt sugar is a nightmare to work with, especially DME. Uh, so I'm just going to get all of this in and dissolve it as best I can before we start turning the temps up and making the beer. Now this is going to be, I think, a five and a half percent. Watch the table, bud. Uh, it's going to be, I think, a five and a half percent beer when it's all done. Um, oh yeah, the the steam from your pot will absolutely give you shaggy shaggy DME. DME is interesting stuff. It's incredibly fine powder. And any moisture will just gum it up like crazy. I'm not even going to try and get that little tiny, you know, that half gram out of the glass. When I go wash my, my, my equipment later, I'll get that off. But right now, I'm going to worry more about making sure that there aren't any lumps and that there's no sugar sitting on the bottom of the pot. For sure. Now, we're doing a one-hour boil here. Even though it's DME and I could do a half an hour boil, the real kicker is we want to make sure that these sugars have a good opportunity what are you doing a good opportunity to uh to melt and do what they need to do the other thing that's going to happen is no matter what we're going to get a hot break out of this hot breaks on a hot plate or a stove and a small batch are nightmares if this stuff gets on on the burner in your garage if it overflows it overflows it's not a big deal in your house sugar on a stove oh bad times even on a small batch brew I will absolutely, absolutely, absolutely use something like firm cap. 
um, as a anti-foaming agent. And again, grab my foil, make myself a little rest for my spoon because I don't want to put it on the wood of this table because I don't want to ruin my table. Not because my spouse will kill me, but because I really like this table and I don't want to wreck it. So I'm going to put my spoon on some foil. The one you marry, that's your spouse. Your spouse is the person you marry. So if your boy, it's your wife or your husband, well, it doesn't really matter. It's your spouse, the one you marry. Yeah. Whoever you're married to, that's your spouse. And, and a good life lesson is never mess with your spouse um, because yeah, it's, it's not worth it. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna keep draining that. I am now going to crank this up and I'm gonna put this up probably on high at least until we can get this brew going. The lights might flicker, but rest assured, nothing's gonna melt. You're still starving? I heard my tummy gurgle. You heard your tummy gurgle. You know what happens? All of these smells are so good, they make your tummy gurgle. So I'll tell you what we're gonna do. You are gonna go and have something to eat. And now that the brew is ready and the temperature is on, the important thing is done. This is a five of diamonds Pilsner from Blind Man Brewing here in Alberta. Uh, some great folks down in Lacombe. The beer has been blessed with the five of diamonds. Cheers, buddy. Clink, where's your, where's your juice box? Oh, well, fist bump then. Hegeshegedra, cheers. Go have some lunch. I'll see you later. Okay. Thanks for helping. Well, there you go. I'm going to get a boil going here. We're going to finish making some beer. Mm. So as this comes up to a boil, I'm going to get a sample and see where we're at for our gravity. Now, this is, uh, this is an important thing. I want to know how much potential alcohol there is. Um, and it'll also let me know how good my mouth was. I only need a few drops. And I'm just going to spread those drops across the glass of my refractometer and close the cover slide. That'll make a nice film of liquid that covers the whole thing. I'm just going to turn it to the light so that I can actually see it and get a focus here. Now, uh, pre-boil, pre-boil, this is 1.040. Now, I wanted this to be a little bit lighter beer, smaller beer, um, so that's right in the neighborhood. The recipe, um, that's how I clean my refractometer. Yeah. Why waste, you know, waste not, want not. But, um, as always, when you're dealing with small volumes, a very small difference makes a big difference in the result. So pay attention to that as you brew and, uh, and, and everything will be great. Now, we're just about at a boil. This little hot plate is really just, it's doing everything it can to get this thing to a boil. Um, I suspect the wattage is lower than I thought it was and that's why. So do remember that when you're looking at hardware. Um, get hardware that's big enough to do the job you're looking to do. A gallon is not a lot, but it is a lot of water and water's uh, capacity to hold heat is really quite incredible. Um, it takes a lot of energy to heat um, water up. And so uh, getting the wattage you can uh, is, is really, really important. And on we go. Mm. Smells great. Pretty good for your skin too. I, I always suggest getting down right into it. Making sure that, uh, making sure your glasses fog up appropriately. Six hours later. Beer smells amazing. We have hit the timer, so it's time to get the hops in. Uh, and we're going to set another timer to make sure we don't overdo it because these are super, super, super strong hops. Uh, Alexa, set a 10 minute timer. 10 minutes, starting now. Ooh. Oh, I was going to put them in a basket and then I thought, you know, most of this is going to go straight into the fermenter. It'll settle out. I'm not going to get uh, five full bottles. Um, I'm going to get four. Uh, so there's going to be a little leftover anyway, once it sort of settles and I transfer it. So I'm not too worried about the hops getting in there. Thanks. <laughs> Max came back just after I put the hops in, of course. Wait, what? Well, you're going to help me as soon as it's in 10 minutes. 
we're gonna put some more stuff in. I'm gonna need your help for that. And then, so when these, uh, when, the, when we're ready to take it off, just before it's ready to come off the boil, we're gonna get that Irish moss in, we're gonna get some yeast nutrient in. Max is gonna help with that. Irish moss. It's actually seaweed. What? 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 <laughs> I'm gonna prepare just a tiny little, uh, little package for the for the beer the meme what what right at the end um because we're doing one gallon i'm literally putting about a gram of yeast nutrient in it's actually minerals. yes it is actually minerals and a, and a, and a little cool. you know a good sized pinch of it's irish moss but certainly not as much as i would put into a normal beer uh just well it does when you heat it up like that with some steam that's for sure uh, and some Irish moss. That'll go in when we've got one minute left. This is Irish moss. It's actually seaweed. And if you look really careful, sometimes you can even see like sh like crab claws and stuff in it. You can, it's really cool. Um, and it really works for clarifying that beer uh, as it ferments. So, ooh. All right, we are at two minutes to the end of the boil, two minutes to the, till we take it off the heat. Um, this is kind of a, this is a, this is a big moment for this beer. So Max, can you tip this into the pot, please? So this is our Irish moss and our yeast. Quickly, quickly, we got to get it in there, bud. There you go. So we're going to tip that in. Also called seaweed. <laughs> yeah, so that's our Irish moss and our and our yeast nutrients, okay? And now, what are you doing? Please don't, don't. now. Okay, now, coffee's got to go in. So now, put the coffee in, pour that in. Nice and smooth. Yeah, get her all in there. Go, go, go. Boom, beautiful. So the Sippy Falls coffee is now in. Give it one more stir. And as soon as Alexa tells me we're done. Oh yeah, I shouldn't have said her name. She gets very, very egotistical if you're not careful. Oh, there's a little more, a little more yeast nutrient there. There we go. So that now is going to... Don't, 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 don't put stuff in the beer. Do you want me to drink that? <laughs> that doesn't go there. No. All right. Putting it over the steam. Oh, well, don't do that. Why? Because it's just steam. You don't need to be that nice to steam. It's just steam. So we will take the, the pot off the heat completely and just set it to cool. Um, I'm going to let it cool for... Um, I I'm going to let it, smell. I'm going to let it, yeah, I bet you did. I'm going to let it cool for probably two hours, but I'm not going to chill it. Um, the home brew, uh, or the small batch. Thank you, Alexa. Please turn off the timer. And that is it. So it is off the heat. We are now in cool phase. It's going to take some time to cool. Um, the hot plate is devilishly hot. Don't get near it. It's off, let it be off, and let it cool on its own. It's going to take some time. Uh, so this is going to cool for probably, I'm going, to, I'm going to guess two hours. If you have a sink close by, you can absolutely set it in a sink and run cool water around it. Put it in a, put a bag of ice cubes around it. That totally works too. Uh, but you'll find it will cool very, very quickly of its own accord, just being sitting on a counter. Two hours later. Alan and I hose, hold this hose. We are filling this jar now i'm gonna let it bubble up I'm gonna let it get all excited and uh yeah let's fill this one gallon up and uh and be ready to start our fermentation a little later tonight uh again the kvike yeast it's a hot fermenting yeast it's a farm yeast um, it's gonna throw some interesting flavors and it's probably gonna be done inside as little as 48 hours um, I'm going to give it probably four days to ferment. Um, wow. I can even get coffee off of what's coming out just from the pot right now. Incredible. Um, it should be a nice, fairly rich golden color, which would be ideal for this beer, sort of based on my hopes for it. Um, and it looks like the volume is just about spot on. I know what we didn't do. And I'm going to leave a little bit of wort still in the container here because we haven't done a final gravity post boil. Um, temperature isn't really a big problem for that, but I definitely don't want to miss 
Oh, no, you keep going. You keep going. Oh, you bugger. Well, I guess that's what it's going to be. There isn't much left. Means I'm going to have a half a bottle less than I thought. Remember, we talked about uh, making mistakes on a small batch makes a big difference on the end. So we did get pretty close to the to the one one gallon mark. Um, making small mistakes when you're dealing with small batches can mean a half a batch of beer or half a bottle of beer rather. There, I'm just going to rinse my fingers in the star sand. Again, there we go. Uh, I will be washing those, not to worry. But let's do a really quick refractometer reading uh, on that final. I'm going to do this with this in case I try to get a little bit more out of that kettle. Uh, but let's get a few drops of this beer onto the refractometer. And let's just see where the final batch comes in at one point come on now work with me come on eyepiece focus 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 1.045 so that was our target that's what we hit uh, that actually means i got a little bit of conversion out of that grain that we steeped early on which is fantastic um, and it means we may have boiled a little more than uh, anticipated i was kind of hoping for about four well, certainly at four liters um, for a final volume. Uh, now I'm just going to pour a little bit of this. You're just going to have to bear with me. A little bit of this before we get to the trub. Ooh, oh now, easy, easy. There we go. Now we're getting into some of the trub and the cold break, um, which is that protein that's left at the end. Okay that's where we stop and that is where we're going to cap this off i'm just going to spray down the outside of the th threads here to make sure that that is nice and clean uh, i will start with uh, i want to start with the cap for this if i manage to find that again any idea where that ended up Greg? not an idea not a clue no idea at all Perhaps it was taken by monkeys. Uh, perhaps it was taken by... Well, you're probably staring at it from the other side of the camera, but I can't see it all of a sudden. How does that... This is... This is... Ah! There it is. So as usual, the time to cool the beer down is probably four times as long as it is to actually brew it if you're not doing that with... Um, the benefit of some kind of cooling process. So because we're using Kvike yeast, we're going to set this up to ferment, uh, but I'm going to put it in uh, underneath a tray because my expectation is this might get a little aggressive. Now this is the Kvike yeast that I harvested from uh, the bottle of beer from Bent Stick. So we know the yeast is good. We've popular, we've 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 uh, propagated it and duplicated it and built it up. Because it's a one gallon, I don't need a ton. Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to just get this slurry uh, slurried up. I'm going to use basically half of this. The other half of this will go into another starter, and we'll build it up again. And um, that population uh, will be uh, su supplanted by some of what I can harvest from this beer. Uh, and then we'll get a, a good balance of stuff to keep continuing forward with. So um, I've got a nice slurry here that's in a good uh, sealed sterile container. We're going to, we've given this a good shake already. We're just gonna pitch um, half of this. We're gonna leave a little over a centimeter in the jar. We'll put our airlock on and we'll see what happens in the next 24 hours. There we go. And let's just pitch our slurry right in there. There we go. A little more. Oh, oh, oh. there we go. So we've kept our little bit of our slurry. I'm just literally going to seal that up 
until we are ready to build another starter. That is now in the container. Uh, I'm not even gonna shake it up. It doesn't need it, to be very honest. Uh, let's take our star sound covered airlock here. I'm gonna pour out a little of that unnecessary stuff. We'll set that into the container. We're gonna leave it for the next, uh, well, frankly, the next couple days, and uh, we'll see what what this looks like, uh, and uh, we'll get back to it come bottling day. Uh, that's about it. One gallon, something new, something interesting, and we'll know what it tastes like once we get it out of a bottle. We'll see you guys later, and uh, keep an eye out for the episode where we actually try this beer for the first time. Thanks for watching. Cheers.